Welcome to you all to this Ash Wednesday service. Please join me in the call to worship by reading responsively. Every year at Easter, during the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to practice with discipline daily repentance. Our daily dying and rising in union with Christ. We begin this season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us worship God. Lent is a journey of deepening reflection. It's a journey of deepening renewal. It's an opportunity to make new commitments in faith, and we prepare for this journey by setting aside the burdens that would weigh us down. At this time, let us turn to God, confessing our sin. Please pray with me. Lord God, it is hard to think that we will die someday. We dream, make plans, and talk about what we'll do in the near future. We don't always think about what you want. Instead, we make choices that we think are good for us. But we are only here because you take care of us. We confess that we forget we need you all the time. We confess that sometimes we make choices that aren't what you want. We don't know what is best for our lives. Holy God, we are sorry for our sin. Help us to remember we live because of you. Help us to do what you would want us to do through Jesus our Lord. Amen. You're invited now to hear this good news. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. By his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity for us all. Please rise and let us sing together hymn number 166. Your hymn book is provided there for you. It is Lord Who throughout these 40 days. We also welcome those who are streaming and watching this service recorded.
be seated. Let us pray. By the illumination of your Holy Spirit, O God, open our hearts that we may hear your word and amend our lives. Through Jesus Christ, amen. The first lesson is from Joel, chapter 2, verses 12 through 16. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from punishment. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him? A grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. A reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my sin and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Instead, restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice that is acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. We have gathered here today, friends, on the first day of this journey of Lent. It is a new year, but the challenges before us are often the same as they were last year and the year before that. There is a comedian, writer, author, speaker named A. Whitney Brown. He wrote for Saturday Night Live for a number of years and served as a cast member there. And he really sums things up pretty well, I think, when he describes the human condition uh, in these kinds of terms. He says that there are really good history books that are essentially just a long list of mistakes complete with dates and names. Does that sound familiar? It's not just the history books, is it? It's also our scriptures. I'm reminded of the golden calf incident in the Old Testament. I imagine that you're familiar with that story as well. Moses went up on Mount Sinai to receive a word from the Lord. And while he was away, his brother Aaron and the Israelites, they decided that they wanted to make something in God's image. And so they crafted something that resembled a calf and said, here is your God. Well, they were turning their back, 
of course, on what the one true God really is in that moment, and there were consequences for that sin. It tore their community apart when Moses came back down that mountain and told them that it was best to move in another direction instead. Do you remember the Old Testament figure of David? Few tower as highly as he does in scripture, in memory, in the lore of a nation and a people. The king of that nation. We recall the earlier stories of him when he was just a boy battling with Goliath. But one day he did become the king and with that power comes great responsibility. Sometimes our leaders take the wrong paths. We know that was true for King David. He fixed his gaze upon a woman who was not his wife, Bathsheba. He decided to have an affair with her and more than that, he decided to send her husband to the very front of the battle lines in order that he might get killed, instructing the rest of the soldiers to take a step back so that he would be the only vulnerable person on those front lines. Adultery and murder, that's two of the Ten Commandments in one go, isn't it? There were consequences to that sin. It resulted in not only the child being uh, dead upon arrival, sadly, but it also resulted in David almost losing any semblance of his family that had previously existed. There are consequences for our sin. We know it's not just scripture, it's not just the history books, but in our own lives. We can look back and reflect on those times when things were not as they ought to have been. Sins of commission, sins of omission, simply not doing the things that we ought to have done in that moment, not doing what was right. And so we reflect on those words of Whitney Brown and we recall that that story is repeating itself, not simply in scripture or the history books, but here and now in our lives. We have a variety of things on these tables that are meant to symbolize this moment and help you reflect on the Lenten journey. We have sheaves of wheat, Wheat is meant to symbolize the resurrection at the time of God's judgment. You see the black ribbon here, which I think symbolizes for us the reminder of our sin and death and that longing that we have to get to the resurrection. We have a series coming up. It's going to focus on art in the parables. We'll be looking at some of those fav favorite and famous parables in Scripture that Jesus taught. This is a famous painting by Rembrandt. It's the return of the prodigal, if you recall that story. Here is the prodigal. You can see how uh, abused his shoes have been, how he is down to less than his last nickel, and he's coming back in this shroud of darkness to be welcomed home. There is the cross, that great reminder of Jesus' suffering and death. We see the ashes, symbols not only of this service, but of our return. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Sin pervades our lives. There is scripture upon which we cast our hopes and dreams and which leads us toward a better life and a better way of being and the candles that remind us of God's endless grace because the beautiful thing not only about that golden calf story if there can be a beautiful thing in that or the story of David and Bathsheba and Uriah is that sin, it didn't have the final word, it didn't have the last say. The Hebrew people were forgiven by God. They remained a people. They remained God's people. 
And even in the midst of their shortcomings and failings, they were lifted up once again into the light of their God. King David, there were consequences, sure, but he didn't lose his life and he didn't lose his people. He continued to reign as king. God remained with him because he turned his heart toward God. He asked for forgiveness. He was penitent. What does this moment say for us, friends? We gather in a circle which is meant to be meaningful of this moment. We are joined together as the community of God. We are God's people here now. God is with us. Some of us have come wearing black, the sign of ashes. Some of us have come wearing purple, perhaps the sign of this Lenten journey. And we know, no matter what we have done, as the Apostle Paul reminds us, there is nothing that can finally separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We've gathered here for a sacred purpose. To remind ourselves of the ashes of sin and death, yes, but also the glory that is coming, the resurrection life that we have in Christ. And as we receive these ashes today, we do so remembering that there are places in our lives that are tarnished, but there is also more than enough mercy and forgiveness to go around. May it be so, and all thanks be to God, both now and forever. Amen. Today, I will join you by stepping into the center of the circle I have ashes here, as I already noted, on this table. They are actually the burnt palm branches from last Palm Sunday. I give thanks to all those who made this service possible by bringing these gifts that are reminders of God's presence with us here and now this day. If you do not wish to have a sign of the ashes placed on your forehead, you can ask that I put them here on the inside of your hands so that that would be facing your heart as you go about the rest of your day. You'll note that as this service concludes, we will depart in silence, even though we do have a closing hymn before that. As I step into the circle, I invite you to join me to share in our humanity and to share in this sacred reminder this remembrance that is finally one of hope. God is with us even in death. Amen.
Would you please pray with me? Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world by the cross and passion of our Savior. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Please rise one more time and let us sing together hymn number 215, What Wondrous Love Is This? the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. Amen. <laughs>